Russia has made moves to develop a new mini space shuttle that is comparable in size to the US Air Force's mysterious space plane, the X-37B. The craft is specifically designed to transport cargo into orbit and return it to Earth. Its development is spearheaded by the Molnia Research and Production Association (NPO), the same developers of the Soviet Union's first space plane, the Buran. Production of the fundamentally new reusable vehicle has begun along the lines of a new model that is presented by Russia in the closed pavilion of the Army 2020 Forum. In this video, we'll be exploring this space plane project and all the tiny details about Russia's spacecraft. Do watch this video until the end and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Russia has started manufacturing its unmanned space airplane, which is similar in size to that of a Boeing X-37B spacecraft used by the US. Buran's leading designer, Vladimir Bugrov, revealed that the production of the fundamentally new reusable vehicle has begun on the lines of the model presented by Russia in the closed pavilion of the Army 2020 Forum. The space plane is being developed by the Molnia base that will be assigned for the delivery and return of cargo from space. Olga Sokolova said in Molnia Research and Production Base's release, Now the task has been set and the development of a civilian reusable complex with an orbital spacecraft is in full swing. The civilian aerospace shuttle will be launched on a Suze type rocket, most likely in the next five years, just like the 1988 Buran that conducted a range of tasks and transportation on Earth's space route. The United States X 37B spacecraft is currently deployed for a similar mission in the United States Air Force and has been launched about six times. The details of these launches have been kept a secret for a while. China also tested a spacecraft with reusable technologies of similar design from Jiquan Cosmodrome in September 2020 on Changzhen 2F launch vehicle. Following the release issued by the Molnia facility, Russia's Sukhoi Design Bureau was brought into the project. To provide expertise on the aeronautical design of the spacecraft thus far known by the acronym MLD, the prototype developed by the International Scientific Optical Network ISON, for Russia's space agency Roscosmos showed that there were some similarities including delta wing configuration, hypersonic speed, rocket-like central fuselage, and deployment of parachutes at a certain altitude. The spacecraft will be entirely manufactured from discarded old Russian-made components, including the 14D-30 rocket booster, the upper stage of a Briz-M space launch vehicle. The craft has been specifically designed to transport cargo into orbit and return it to Earth. The development is under the supervision of Molnia Research and Production Association (NPO), the developers of the Soviet Union's first space plane, the Buran. Like the X-37B, the new model is called the Mini Buran, and it will run autonomously and is anticipated to be space-ready in the next five years. The Buran program was started by the Soviet Union in the early 1970s as a response to the United States Space Shuttle program. The project was downsized and eventually cancelled in the 90s. But at the time, it was the largest and most expensive in the history of Soviet space exploration. Its first space plane, the Buran, was rolled out of production in 1984 and completed one uncrewed spaceflight in 1988. It was later destroyed in a 2002 disaster, which unfortunately reportedly killed eight workers when the hangar was stored in collapse. Buran was designed to be launched on the Soviet Union's super heavy lift vehicle, Energia, but the new version will be launched into orbit on a Suze type launch vehicle. Even though many of the details of the spacecraft are not out yet, Molnia's Director General said that the new Mini Buran will have the same dimensions as the US's X-37B spacecraft. The X-37B spacecraft is about 8.8 .8 meters long and 2.9 meters tall, with a wingspan just less than 4.6 meters. This is significantly smaller than the Buran, which topped 36.4 meters in length and had a wingspan of 23.9 meters. The X-37B has been successfully operating since 2010, and during this time it's made six flights, a few of which have carried secret payloads on long-duration flights in Earth's orbit. Like the X-37B, the reusable Mini Buran is expected to land back on Earth via a runway. But unlike the secretive plane, however, Sokolova says that its main use will be for transportation of goods to space and back, and again, it could be used for commercial purposes. Despite many plans, prototypes, and experimental flights since, only two space planes have ever entered service the Space Shuttle, and the top-secret Boeing X-37B. Only the small, unmanned Boeing remains in service. 
The facility at the Colorado Air and Spaceport was purpose-built by Reaction Engines to run hot tests of the technology that the company's revolutionary new rocket engine depends on. These tests were backed by the US government's Secretive Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, DARPA. Reaction Engines is a British aerospace company founded by engineers Alan Bond, Richard Varville, and John Scott in 1989 after the cancellation of the British spaceplane project, Hotel. Its aim was to create Hotel's successor, the ultra-sleek, single-stage-to-orbit spaceplane Skylon, together with the engine that would power it. The synergetic air-breathing rocket engine, Sabre, is a hydrogen-powered engine that can propel a spaceplane like Skylon from zero to hypersonic speeds using the oxygen in Earth's atmosphere, and then when traveling fast enough, blast the vehicle into space using an onboard supply of oxygen, like a conventional rocket. Beyond the security fence, a modified version from a Cold War-era fighter jet is used to replicate the very high temperature airflow generated at hypersonic speeds. The superheated air is blasted through a lightweight ring-like device made up of thousands of thin-walled tubes, through which coolant is passed. The aim of this pre-cooler is to remove the extreme heat very quickly. When used in the Sabre engine, it's hoped it will prevent its internal components from melting at the high temperatures and ensure the engine runs efficiently. Early in 2019, the pre-cooler had worked at 420 degrees Celsius, 788 degrees Fahrenheit, in conditions that replicated flight speeds of Mach 3.3, or more than three times the speed of sound. But the engineers wanted to reach the magic number of Mach 5. That is more than 6,200 kilometers per hour, 3,800 miles per hour. It is also more than twice as fast as the cruising speed of Concorde, and over 50% faster than the SR-71 Blackbird aircraft the world's fastest jet engine-powered aircraft. Mach 5 also happens to be the limit of today's materials used in aircraft production. A Mach 5, an altitude of 20 kilometers, or 12 miles, is where Sabre stops breathing the air, closes its inlets, and starts to burn liquid oxygen mixed with its hydrogen fuel to reach speeds of Mach 25, which allows it to go into Earth's orbit. In October 2019, the record was smashed and Mach 5 was reached. The pre-cooler successfully quenched air flowing into the machine at more than 1,000 degrees Celsius, 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit, in less than a twentieth of a second. The success of the test earned team leader Helen Weber the Royal Aeronautical Society's prestigious Sir Ralph Robbins Medal for Engineering Leadership, and the wider team of Hall of Rewards. We achieved something that has never been done before, Weber said. This was a major moment in the development of a breakthrough aerospace technology. This success moves us one step closer to the realization of Sabre and paves the way for hypersonic flight. While we may have to wait 10 years for flight trials of the engine to begin, their innovative heat management technology looks set to be applied in other areas. In electric cars, for example, new efficient lightweight heat exchangers will make lithium batteries charge faster and last longer. The concept of a space plane is simple. A very loose definition could mean that the Boeing 747 that launched Virgin Orbit's Launcher 1 is classified as a space plane because it is equivalent to that of a spacecraft's first stage. There are two types of real space planes. Gene DeVille, the Shenzhen-based author of the China Aerospace blog and co-host of a podcast about Chinese aerospace and technology, Don Fang Auer, explains, The easiest version is where the space plane is blasted into space on the back of a traditional vertical takeoff rocket like the Space Shuttle. The hardest is when the launch vehicles take off horizontally and when it reaches space by a progressive trajectory, or when both stages are space planes, like China's Tengyun concept. It is easy to list the advantages of space planes. There is the interesting idea of flying to a space station and back just as we fly in an airliner from one state to another. There is the ability of space planes to use runways rather than requiring expensive launch pads, which also means they can be launched and landed more often. If you want to retrieve a satellite, then a space plane, not a crude capsule returning to Earth via parachute, seems to be the only solution. Space planes can be returned to test military equipment and intercept enemy satellites. The technology of space planes overlaps with that of hypersonic weapons and aircraft. For this reason, Reaction Engines is a member of a research program funded by the UK Ministry of Defence to develop hypersonic propulsion systems for aircraft. Unfortunately, the space industry hasn't evolved in the way that space plane advocates want. We have made far more progress with computers than rockets, David Burback of the US Naval War College, Rhode Island, says. Automation means that we really don't need to send many people into space. It may seem primitive, it may seem undignified, but rockets are actually all we need at the moment. 
Some analysis believe that there is now little demand to bring satellites back to Earth because they have become cheaper to build, longer lasting, and frankly disposable. SpaceX's Starlink satellite constellation uses thousands of mass-produced small satellites to expand internet access. Another issue is that space planes involve expensive technological challenges. Materials needed are those that are tough and light enough to survive frequent return trips to space. There is also the problem of integrating the two or three different types of propulsion systems needed for different stages of the flight. Ultimately, the main obstacle to space plane projects is that the development requires a whole lot of resources. This may be the reason why Europe and the USSR were not so enthusiastic about it. Another big challenge is the competition. Companies like SpaceX have a reputation for pushing a lot of boundaries and seem to be killing the space plane. They're working very hard to make space access cheap and this may be eliminating the motivation to invest in expensive space plane research. However, it is. The space plane is still in the works and we will remain on the lookout for what Russia is about to produce as they continue to advance spacefaring. Thank you for watching this video. While you're here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen. See you there.